Here we go. Hi, everybody. This is Gail. Welcome to my channel. I see we've already been joined by Pocahontas District Rail fans. So, hi again and welcome. I hope you're doing well. Hope everybody's having a great New Year's Eve. Woo! Cannot believe that 2022 is going away in just a few hours. Unbelievable. And hey, I have been joined by the dog. <laughs> that didn't take him long to pop in here. Let's see if I can get him to laugh. Hey, you, come here. Up, oh, laugh. Come on. You can just barely see him. Hi, you want to take me? I'm good. Okay, we got that out of the way. So what I thought I would do tonight is on the food line haul that I did the other day, I bought the ingredients for sausage balls without realizing that you guys were going to message me for the recipe. I just didn't think about that. I'm sorry. So what I'm going to do on the live stream tonight is I'm going to whoop up a batch of sausage balls. They are so easy to make. And I use like the original Bisquick recipe, which is like super, super, super easy. You can find some recipes now where they call for Italian dressing or extra rosemary and milk and all that stuff. This recipe doesn't, okay, y'all? The one I use just calls for sausage, this quick, of course, because it's a this quick recipe, and sausage. Now, you can use whatever kind of sausage you want, whether you want to use breakfast sausage like I'm using or Italian sausage. Some people use chorizo for whatever reason. I don't know, but if you like chorizo, you can try it. And so I just thought I'd do that tonight uh, and talk to you all about all these things that are coming up for the new year. And I have got some Christmas cards that have come in and I'm going to actually do a special video on those next week. Just thanking everybody for the Christmas cards every year. Uh, we do a little exchange and I love it. And I always show you all the cards. This year I'm behind because of getting sick. I didn't have COVID. I, I did have a little bit of a crud for the few days, but with my hubby having it again, it's just been totally crazy because I didn't want to go out and give people COVID too. So I stayed home as much as possible. And that's that. So the haul video was done obviously before COVID and you see me doing the shopping. I usually buy generics on cheese. You know, I've just not noticed a huge difference between Food Lion and Food City brand and Kraft. Uh, for the for the rest of it, when it comes to sausage balls, I like to use more brands. Um, the Bisquick really does work better, I think, than some of the competitors that are out there for the sausage balls. And I also um, like sausage that is Wampler or Jimmy Dean, something like that. So I'm going to go on in here and I'm going to check comments just for a second and pull up the live stream on my YouTube channel because that kind of helps me monitor the signal. So, unfortunately, it's not like last weekend, right, when we were having all those rolling blackouts and all that other um, interesting stuff that was going on. This year it's nice and, sorry, this weekend is nice and quiet, just what you hope the setting you hope to have for New Year's Eve, right? So, all right, let me pull Railfan up on the screen here. So, hey. All right, without further, further ado, <laughs> let me grab all of my ingredients, all three of them, and show you all how to make them. Oh, I also need to make sure I posted this in my Facebook group. I think I did, but let me just double check just in case. Okay, you all. Ta -da! And if you're not in our Facebook group, uh, go ahead and join us over there because we have a lot of fun in our hashtag Be Bodacious Facebook group, which is Gail Blogs. And ha, I did post it. And I'm really proud over there. I asked, what, oh, let me add the link. Um, and I asked over there, I said, what is one thing that you hope to accomplish in the new year and got some really inspirational answers. So I want to thank all y'all who answered that over there and go check out the responses. They're pretty cool. 
people want to write books and do all sorts of things, do more painting and just, just lots and lots of things, giving to charity and so forth. So go check out those answers. I'm going to, I'm going to grab my stuff and I will be right back with it. And while I've stepped away, this is a good time to give me a like on the video if you haven't done so yet. And be sure to subscribe. I don't usually do cooking videos. I do a lot of road trips and travel and the lifestyle and travel vlogs. Um, now this is, I'll go ahead and tell you, this is a recipe that I will take sometimes on road trips because they freeze well, they refrigerate well, you can put them in a bag and put them in your cooler and they do really well for that and just take a couple out uh, for breakfast or snacks on the road. So let me grab this and you will need a large mixing bowl, of course a spoon, a scoop, sausage, whoops, I'm sorry, I just bumped the dog. It's okay though. A full package of cheese and two cups of Bisquick mix. And I gotta tell y'all, if you happen, if you don't have these items, over on my Facebook group, I've got a couple of people that sell Pampered Chef, Melanie and Kay, and they are you, you need these if you're going to cook. They're great. So the whole recipe is just simply, whoops, I'm going to have a knife to cut this with. <laughs> I also need a baking dish. And let me cut the package here. So it's super, super simple, uh, really easy uh, Bisquick recipe. For these sausage balls. I don't add anything extra to it. Some people do, like I told you that there is, there are some recipes out there that call for Italian sausage and rosemary or extra sage. Um, some people like these with barbecue sauce. Uh, I've, I've heard of people doing like a chili sauce to go with these. Now I haven't tried that. So if you all have done a chili sauce, let me know how that worked because I just can't quite get my round, mind around sausage balls. And it could be that somebody used a different kind of sausage. Um, this is just Wampler's breakfast sausage. And hey, I see we have a few people. I see we have a few people in. So hi and welcome. Don't forget to give me a like on the live stream and feel free to drop your comments and suggestions. Uh, let me know what you want to accomplish uh, during the new year. Is anybody setting any kind of resolutions? I'm not. I thought about it, but given that I can't hardly remember what I do from one day to the next, I'm not 100% sure that I'm going to be able to keep up with resolutions for the new year. Just because it's me. All right, so sausage, excuse me just a second, leave it down. You know better, down. Okay, so one package of sausage. I'm just going to kind of break it up a little bit in the bowl. Take my knife and, and break it. Now I'm going to take two cups of this quick. I'll stand up here a minute. And I'll put it in a little at a time. I'll do half and then I'll do about half again. And you can do this if you want to hook up your stand mixer, if you've got one, just use the flat paddle and you could do that. You can do it by hand like I'm doing now. Don't try to don't even try to do a hand mixer though. This is just too strong for it. And it'll either it won't mix well or it'll burn out your mixer. Neither is exactly desirable. I'm gonna turn this down just a little bit. Hope see if you can see it better. That looks like it helped. 
and some more of the this quick baking mix. Now, some people will add extra milk or water to it. I usually don't need to. But you can if you feel like your mixture is too dry. And of course, now that I've said that, I may have to add just a little bit. If you are going to add moisture, add it just like a tablespoon at a time. It's the whole less is more thing going on there. So there we go, I've got that mixed in and I'm gonna mix in the cheese. And I just use straight cheddar cheese. I've seen some recipes that called for cream cheese and I don't know what's up with that. So if that's a recipe that you use in your household, let me know if you like it better than just the, the cheddar. I think I've ever had it with cream cheese. And again, just mix it up really good. screen up so I can see you all while I while I mix this. Hi Beverly. Oh he's in the bedroom. He's on the phone with somebody. So I don't know who he's who he's on the phone with, but as long as we don't hear the conversation we're good, right? So it takes you a minute to mix it, and that's okay. Now I said I might have to add some water. I'm still a little bit on the fence. Or milk, you can add add milk if you need to. But again, if you're going to do that, just add a little at a time. Don't add a whole lot because you don't want to overdo it. You'll wind up having to add a lot more mix to it. And that'll just kind of mess up your ratio there. So there we go. Yeah, I don't think I'm going to have to mix anything else in here. I think I am a-okay. Yeah. So let me just, just show you. It's kind of a dry mixture. You don't want it too wet. But there we go. So there we go. I do have a little bit more. I can just mix in here. There at the very bottom. There we go. And that's all there is to it. I didn't have to mix any water in or anything. No milk or water. So take out my handy dandy scoop here. 
And I like using a pan baking dish rather than a pan simply because I think it helps the sausage balls to cook better, a little more evenly. Um, they're really, they have a tendency to brown really good on the bottom. If you don't like that, then use a thicker sheet. Also, some recipes call for greasing the pan. I don't usually do that. I'm cooking with sausage. And usually, the last thing I have to worry about is it sticking. And I use my scoop because it makes it easier. This scoop and this two cup measuring cup are two of like my favorite cooking things. And I got them at Pampered Chef. I have not seen a two cup measuring cup elsewhere, like at Walmart or anything. But I have gotten cookie scoops at Walmart. That's just what this is. I use it for meatballs too. Just go wherever you can get the best price. Amazon's probably got them. Tell you what, I'll look those up on Amazon and drop a link in the description box if I see them in a brand that I'm familiar with. And another thing that I was asked the other day and I haven't tried yet, but I'm going to, I'll do a stream on it or a video. Um, somebody saw my video on one of the washing machines and they asked me if I could if they could wash clothes in a salad spinner Now I really don't know how that's going to go but I have a salad spinner and I'm going to try that Now, these things, there's a couple of ways you can go here. Um, you can freeze. I've got extra here going on. Um, you can either go ahead and make this into sausage balls and freeze it without cooking, or you can go ahead and cook the sausage balls and then freeze them and just put them in the microwave for a minute when you're ready for them. Um, I will probably make these into balls and then freeze them. Um, and if you do that, put, put them in a layer and then put wax paper in between the two layers. It really makes it a lot easier. So now with these, all I'm gonna do is stick these in the oven, preheated to 350 for about 20 minutes. Let me slip this over here and rinse my hands. And set the timer. Okay. I'm going to rinse my hands off now. <laughs> Give me just one second. I'll get back over there. So there you go. Let me tip this down so I can talk to y'all. Oh, and it does help on the sausage. Um, it, it helps if it's a little bit close to room temperature or at room temperature because it mixes better. And if it's too cold, the ingredients won't mix. And that could be why some people are having to add uh, milk and so forth. But for this re recipe, you really don't have to. Let's see, let me pull this up. Bring up some of the comments. Hi, Tanya, welcome. I wasn't sure how many people we'd have in tonight, but I thought, why not? You know, whoops, I'm making sausage balls 
just the Bisquick sausage ball recipe. Um, it was, uh, honestly, that was something I figured most people knew how to make. So I didn't think about doing the video on it until I got messages from two people, uh, Gloria and Alyssa, who wanted to know how to do it. So I thought I would show it. it it's just a super simple recipe. Really, really easy. And that's what you want, especially this time of year, because who's got time to do anything complicated? Not me. So let's see. Oh, and y'all may hear gnawing noises. That's because somebody has his toy that he's chewing on. So just want to heads up on that. Okay. So yeah, this is one of the recipes that we do at Christmas time or during the holidays, um, not just at Christmas. We'll do it at holidays and I'll sometimes take it with me on road trips. That and banana bread, those are like my family's like two big recipes. I would have to say probably the banana bread is even more common on our road trips um, just because it's quick and it's easy. And I'll be making some up, I'm sure, for when we go to Alaska later. And Tanya says, oh, okay, I love to cook. So, yay. She's, you've, you've done some really good recipes yourself. They look super tasty. And she says, guess what? I'm afraid to ask. What? What? What, what, what? Inquiring minds want to know. Oh, and also, uh, let me let me toss this out so y'all can hold me honest. Um, Alyssa also asked me to talk more about the Alaska trip coming up. Um, she's she apparently follows the channel some, and Alyssa, I appreciate your help for the dog. Um, but yes, he is going to Alaska with me, and um, I'll, I'll talk more about that upcoming trip in just a minute. Let me see what Tanya's got going on. Okay. She says, okay, she had a back injury about 15 years ago and she's never been able to wiggle her toes because of her CPA. And yesterday she was able to wiggle her toes and her back stopped hurting. Yay. That's phenomenal. That is super good news. And she goes on to say, and I got nerves in my legs and feet that I've never been able to feel my legs and feet. And I can feel now it's really weird, but God does such miraculous healing. Yes, he does. That is awesome. I'm very, very happy for you. Yay. And let's see. Valerie Reese is in the house. Hi, Valerie. And welcome. I can Barry Holler is here. Hey, hey Leah. And Tony says it's because of her cerebral palsy. Yes. That is awesome. Very good. Very good. Praise God for that. And Valerie's saying hi. Connie's saying hi, y'all. So, okay, to answer a couple of questions, while, while the sausage balls are cooking, and um, Valerie and Lee, you guys, um, I've already mixed up the sausage balls there in the oven. It's the best quick recipe that's over in the group. But um, Alyssa asked me a couple of questions about going to Alaska. So I thought I would answer those here. Um, even though I'll be talking more about it as time goes on, but I wanted to answer those. Let me let me pull up her her email here with her questions in it. Give me just a second. I know one was is Pipsy going with me, and that's yes. Okay. So basically, Aly Alyssa, you're just kind of asking who, what, where, when, why, and how. I think I got it. Um, so first things first, yes, Pipsy is going to go with me. Um, and we are driving, uh, at current plans are for me to leave here and then go to Southeast Ch Tennessee and pick up another team member who is going to ride out there with me. So I've got somebody going with me this time and it's Cassandra. Uh, she went with me once before and I think though i think we're probably going to go out to new mexico first for a couple of days uh, just so i can hug my grandbaby again 
and then uh, go on up and enter into Canada going from there. I'm not sure, and you would ask this, I'm not sure yet about the exact route. If we're going to go in in like North Dakota or Montana or go in through Washington State, which we did before. Um, where we went into Washington State, we were about 45 minutes for Van, from Vancouver. And I've always regretted not going on into Vancouver, but we were starting to run late already. So I was afraid to. So I'm not sure yet which route. Um, and we'll talk more about that as I get things more nailed down going on. So Pipsy and Cassandra are going with me. Um, we'll be in Willow, which is just north of Anchorage. And then we're going to do some sightseeing at Denali National Park. We're going to go up there. And that's as a group we're required uh, to take a cultural experience somewhere on the trip. And with Alaska, I have, I, I can't nail it down to like one. I, there's so much there to do and it's all cultural. So we'll be doing several things. Um, let's see. Valerie wants to know if I know what day I'll be leaving. She'll probably want to do another meetup with you to give you anything I've collected prior to the trip. Yeah, definitely sounds good. I do not know what day yet. Um, at least, at least 10 days ahead of time. So I have to be there a day before you all get there. So... I can't pull up my calendar app. But anyway, I have to be there a day before you all get there to make sure everything's set up and to do any last minute setup work. So I'll be leaving 10 days before that. So maybe we can get together like end of June, 1st of July, something like that. But we'll talk more about it and get it all, get it all nailed down. And for, the, for those of you who don't know yet, Miss Valerie Reese is going to be going on the trip with me. So she's, she's part of the team. I'm going to meet her up there. Super, super stoked because we always have, it's a lot of hard work, but we always have a blast. And I do mean it's a lot of hard work. We're be chopping wood, working with the food pantry, working with the clothing closet, helping with the shower ministry. Last time we also did some groundskeeping roof work and worked on their prayer labyrinth outside. So it was a lot to do. It's a lot of fun. Um, so yeah, let's see. What else did you ask? Get back in here. So who's going with me? Where, when am I going? Late July. Um, now there is a slight possibility, um, that one of the things we might be able to do, and we won't know until we get up there is if the blueberries are starting to come in at Denali National Park, we might be able to pick some. Um, so you had said something about some of the things. Yeah. Uh, what type of things are you doing? Um, so for fun, I told you like our workload there. And then for fun, we'll be doing the um, cultural experiences. Hang on just a second. I think it's time to flip these. Hang on just a second. Okay, and they do puff up a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see that. I really wish you could smell these. They smell delicious. But anyway, let me flip these over. So 
Okay, my timer did not go off. So let me see. 7.32, so about 7.40. I'll check these out again. So anyway, um, go back to this. What else did you want to know? Hang on a second. And I might do a QA and a live stream on this closer to time. Do you all think that would be helpful or interesting? Uh, let me know. Um, so you also asked why, and that's because this is a missions trip experience. So we're going up and we're working with a church in Willow to get these tasks accomplished. So like for the wood cutting, for example, um, what we do is we cut, we cut wood. People will bring us trees already cut and the trees themselves are already cut and the biggest branches and all are cut off. So we'll go through and we'll cut those down and we'll stack them. They've got two large storage buildings that we'll put the wood in. Some of it will even be delivered while we're there. And not as much as you might think, though, because the bulk of it is held back so that in January, February, end of December, just the coldest weather months, that's when they give it out. Um, and typically people have either a disability or they're old, they're infirm and so forth. Sometimes it's a poverty situation. Um, but Alaskans have such a can-do mindset um, that a lot of the people who are in poverty, you know, they go out and get their own wood. So most of the time it's illness or infirmity, so, you know, stuff like that that they'll give it out to. Um, so it, it's, it's a lot of work, but it's a lot of fun. And like I said, we all, we network this completely through a church that's there. Um, they're the ones that vet the folks and so forth. Um, we will also be giving out school supplies. So, you know, backpacks, pencils, paper, composition notebooks, spiral notebooks, protractors, pencils, glue sticks, um, all, anything that the child might need for school, you know, we'll take up there and they'll give that out. Last time I was, we were unloading the trailer and somebody said, oh, you've got school supplies. And they took that box straight into the pantry and literally they were unpacking the box and giving some of it out right then, right that minute. Um, they usually do around 100 kids, you know, plus or minus. Usually it's on the plus side. Uh, school supplies are mind-bogglingly expensive up there. And something that I found out from previous trips is just because a store says they have something in stock, like let's say you go to the Walmart website and you pull it up and you say, oh, it's got, you know, X number of items of whatever. Let's say you put in a quantity of, of 10 of whatever you want. Well, you may get there and find out they don't have it. <laughs> That's happened to us like several times, um, which is... Part of the reason why I drive, um, we've got somebody who for the last mission trip and this one has agreed to generously donate all of the non-perishables. And then we just have to buy, as far as like meals and stuff, but we do still have to buy like mustard, mayonnaise, ketchup. So I'll get all that down here and take it up. That way we're paying a fraction of the cost and we know we've got it so we don't have to worry about getting up there and you know finding out that we're scrambling for an item that we really need for a recipe like spaghetti sauce <laughs> you, know, you know really hard to find items like that um hello so that's part of why i drive um a huge part of why i drive the other thing is it would not be possible to take all this stuff down to UPS and ship it, the cost would be phenomenal. And yes, the cost is phenomenal for me to drive, but it also saves the team money and the folks in Alaska get these things. You know, if we had to pay to ship, like there's a video that I did with and Valerie very generously got some things for the team. And if you see that video, then you have an idea of the volume that I'm talking about. 
and it would not be possible for us to afford to ship all this stuff up there. So with me driving, it makes it possible more so for them to get what they need. We know that we have the supplies that we need. Also, team members can put things in the van or on the trailer that they may need while they're up there. So several people, instead of taking that second suitcase and paying those fees, they'll just put it on the trailer. Granted, they're going to be without that item for about a month or so, but they'll have it up there. Um, but I'll need, you know, a good 10 days to get it up there and get it back. But, you know, that way they're not having to pay that extra baggage fee. If they get up there and decide they want to go ahead on the return tip, trip and send it, then they still have, have saved money on the first trip. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's part of, pretty much the rationale for driving. You know, it does get a little scary at times. I'm not going to lie. Like, you know, you've heard me talk about it before. If you follow this channel last time, it was forest fires and heat and major storms. And like literally every single day, something happened to go wrong on the trip, whether it was 104 degrees and the van just wouldn't cool off enough. And I had to have the hotel room that night or there was fire, you know, at one point there was fire on both sides of the road. And that was not fun. I am here to tell you. Um, you know, the Royal Canadian Mounties are just going like this, waving this on through. And I'm like, I'm following the pilot car. I'm going, I'm going. Um, but hail storms, I really, I thought I had lost the solar panel a couple of times in, in like furious hail storms. Uh, the top of my trailer honestly looked like somebody took a hammer to it and just pounded it. Um, but the solar panels held. So it was like, I don't, I don't want to get too preachy in this, but honestly, it was like God just put us in a bubble. We had bad things happen, but I got there. And um, so, yeah. One night I couldn't find a place to sleep even. And I was like up in Canada and I was just exhausted and just could not find a place because I don't want to pay for a hotel room because I'm in the van. Um, sleeping in the van does two things. It saves me a hotel room, thank goodness. And the other thing is it provides security so we're less likely to get broken into. And if we are, I'm going to know it. So it provides security for our stuff. And um, I was driving that through Canada and I was on this road. And I can't remember the name of it right now. It's a major highway in Canada. And I found a place that had Wi-Fi and I, I pulled over and I got on their Wi-Fi and got something to drink. And I'm like, I can't, I posted on the internet. I'm like, I'm in this area and I can't find anything. Does somebody have a suggestion of someplace I can look? And somebody on one of the van groups responded and they were like, if you go about another 20 miles down, there is a truck stop in Red Deer and you could spend the night there. And I was like, it was not on my map. Okay, you all. So, you know, just several little God things. And I mean, yeah, you're like, well, you could have looked that up on the internet, except that wasn't working, you know, typing in truck stops near me. And this was like 20 something miles away, um, wasn't working. And you're like, sure, it could be just coincidence. And I'm like, yeah, somebody could just coincidentally happen to be randomly surfing their Facebook and just randomly saw the group notification pop up that just randomly accidentally knew exactly where I could go. You know, you, you, can, you can call it coincidence if you want to. I'm not going to. <laughs> so anyway, we'll, um, so that's probably Melissa more than you wanted to know. And if it is, I'm sorry. Uh, if it's not, just send me another email, okay? But that that's what I'm looking at for the who, where, when, why, and how. How is going to be a lot of prayer. I still have to figure out, like, the gas for getting there and stuff. Um, but it's, it's okay. The other thing is, 
you know, I've got Pipsy now and I don't want to have to deal with the TSA and the service dog. And I know I'm going to have to get three airline tickets if I was to fly because myself, my husband and the dog, he's going to have to have his own seat. And so driving is good for that, but that's, that's a side benefit. I drove even before I had the dog when it was just myself and my daughter. And then John came with us on the return trip back when I drove in the PT cruiser. So, yeah. So anyway, let me, let me get back in here to the chat room. Um, Valerie says she loves picking berries. That's awesome. And it's really so cool. Okay. The, the season really starts more in August. So it's going to be kind of dicey whether or not we get there in time. So I'm hoping, uh, but I can't guarantee, but it's just so neat to be at the national park um, picking berries. We do kind of have to be careful because we do have to watch because the grizzlies are out there too. And they're picking berries, although they're, you, they're not going to be close, probably not going to be close to the road, but it, it can happen. But um, yeah, it's just, it's just cool. One of those really neat things to be able to say, you know, Kind of like if I was a kid and I had to write a report on what I did that this past summer and I said, oh, I went berry picking in Denali National Park. You know, if there was a prize for cool things, that, that would win. I think so too, Tanya. I'm super stoked about it. She says she just popped in to say hello to everyone and to share her good news. It looks like the nerves in her back took time to heal, but I feel great now. That is just awesome. <laughs> it just doesn't get... It does, it's just awesome. It does get better than that. So, yeah. And Valerie says she wants to help with that too, Gail. It's appreciated. Anything anybody wants to do from, you know, from school supplies to help with gas or whatever is amazing. Um, I want to plan the menu before we leave so I can get anything we need. Okay. That's, that sounds good. Uh, we'll have some funds because everybody's going to be pitching in toward food. Um, but the more we can get here, the better off we are. Um, last year, for example, um, I'm sorry, last time, it wasn't last year, but last time we went um, was 19 and somebody gave us a fish fry, which is phenomenal. OK, it, it, it was it was awesome. But what I'm going to say is nothing to do with for, with the fish fry. So I just wanted to toss that out. Um Somebody said, what about we get malt vinegar for the french fries or to, eat, or to put on the fish? And I'm like, okay, we can check it out. So we go to the store and they had a Fred Meyer, which is like Kroger. It was $15 for the bottle of malt vinegar. And I'm looking at it going, holy guacamole. I mean, so, whew. You know, things like that. It's, it's, we didn't know ahead of time, and they were saving the team money by doing that for us, um, doing the fish fry for us. So if you look at it that way, $15 for all of us to have a meal is not bad, but wow. So anything that we can get here, we're better off for. Uh, she got round trip out of Richmond for just under 900 per person with one layover in Chicago. That's a really good, that's a good price. Really good price. Um, I can Barry Holler says, I'm so happy y'all are getting to do this. This has been such a tough year for me. I feel like I need to rally and get back instead of sitting here scraping my balls with pop charts. <laughs> okay. I, I get that analogy. Yeah, I, I totally get that analogy. So if you want to come and join us or if you want to help us get the word out, we can we can talk. Hey, we've got Candy the Wee Service Dog in. How are you? She says, everyone, happy new year. I've been watching that didn't comment. I need to take Candy out. Take care. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. Give Hey, give Candy a hug for me or a pat on the head. Hi, Laurel and hi, Valerie. I got to check and see where my dog just went. He's quiet. I always get nervous when he's quiet. Let me see what he's doing. Hold on just a second. What are you into? Huh? There you are. Oh, you're chewing on your toy. Okay. No, that's a good dog. That's a good dog. Okay. 
So I mentally accused him unnecessarily. All right, let me grab these sausage balls and check them since my timer's not sounding off. I think my husband kind of warned me about that. Aha, they are getting there. I'm gonna go ahead and flip these over again. Okay, so probably not the best idea to flick it out on my hand. Just saying. So here we are at this point. I'm going to give them about five more minutes in the oven. And then I'll tip check them. Let's see. And 7.49, I'll give them about five minutes. So let me come back up here. She didn't want it. Okay, that was for candy. Chris was just diagnosed with hemo. I don't know if I can see this. Hemochromat. Oh, wow. Yeah. What is that? I see Valerie's ass too. Hopefully she'll answer. Does that have something to do with iron in the blood? Now, I've got tons of questions. Like, is that something that's chronic or does it go away? It sounds pretty scary. His body does not process iron. We're waiting to see if he has organ damage from it, but we'll start treatments every two weeks about an hour and a half away. A pint of blood let. Okay. Wow. Wow. Leah, I'm sorry. That's always scary, too, when somebody you know has something and you're the caretaker. So we will, we will hope for the best for him, and we will be in prayer for him. So do keep us, keep us updated. Yes, it's genetic. Okay. There are tons of genetic blood things running around. You know, we and the crazy, like, we don't hear about them that much. We hear about sickle cell, but that's really about the only thing. I know in my family, we have to watch for thalassemia, which is also a blood condition, and it's treated um, by, among other things, uh, vitamin B12 injections. So... I think that was like every two weeks for a while and then backing off to once a week. But there's even two different kinds of that. So it's scary stuff and frustrating stuff. But you're in an area that's got major world-class hospitals. So hopefully they'll have the most cutting-edge info.
me see here too. Which is good. Yeah, major world class hospitals there. And that's what you want when, you, when you've got somebody that's going through any kind of health condition where there's uncertainty, you want the best. So that's good. So Alyssa, I think I got you covered on the questions. Oh, I missed the one about the weather. Okay, Alyssa, it does not snow that much in Alaska in the summertime. Um, it may be like 96 degrees in Anchorage, okay? Don't worry about cold weather jackets. Now, it'll be colder than that up in Denali. It may be like 50 degrees in Denali. So we still have to take jackets, but we don't have to take like parkas and gloves and, and things, things like that. So, in fact, I'm going to let me see if I can figure out what the average summer temperature is. Also, Anchorage is a little bit more mild um, than, say, if we were in Fairbanks. So according to this, which I kind of don't believe, it says that summer in Anchorage, um, this says the high was 88. I'm pretty sure it was higher than that when I was there. That's for July. But even, even 88 is higher than what people think of for Alaska. And this also says that the record low uh, for July was 38. So high of 88 and a low of 38. But I'm pretty sure it was higher than that when I was there. So we'll see. Um, Anchorage is at the tip of a rainforest and Willow is just out of it. So we'll probably have some rain, but Anchorage is going to get more. And then like the further down in Alaska, you go down the Kenai Peninsula toward Homer, you're going to get a little more rain. When we were in Seward, it rained every day for part of the day, not all of it, but part of the day. And Alaskans, they just get used to it. They just kind of ignore it. Like we were caught, I don't want to say freaking out, but we were like grabbing raincoats and so forth. And the folks in Alaska were like, why? It's just a little rain. And one of our parents that was with us, um, she didn't have her kids, but she she had been a mother of four. And she was just all about not letting the kids go out in the raincoat in the rain um, without raincoats on because they were all going to get sick and die of who knows what. And one of the other mothers just looked at her and she's like, no, our kids are Alaskan. They're used to this. And they were. And let's see, um, that makes sense, Hawkenberry. I'm just glad you're doing as well as you are, Valerie. Uh, Seward from Anchorage, let me pull this up. Um, I don't want to quote that off the top of my head. Because the thing is, I, 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 when we've gone to Seward, it's taken us like four hours. So I'm going to give you a more accurate viewpoint. Um, let it come in here. 127 miles, uh, two and a half hours is what it says. I'll pull that up for you too. Uh, if I can get this. Yep. Two and a half hours. And it's really easy to get to. It's, 
it's mind-bogglingly simple to get to. All you do is take Seward Highway out of Alaska, and it takes you directly to Seward. It goes parts further south, too, but directly to Seward. Um, and it's, it's a real neat place. Seward is actually mile zero of the National Iditarod Historic Trail. And that's where, when they did the Great Race of Mercy for the diphtheria vaccine, that's where it came in originally. And then it was transferred several times and then transferred to the dog sleds later. And they used the, uh, what is now the Iditarod Historic Trail for that. A lot of people in the lower eight call that Great Race the Iditarod, um, but that's not quite, not quite how it works. The thing is, the reason it takes me so long, though, is because you start off and then you stop. Because as you go down towards Seward, like on the right, coming out of Anchorage, is the Gulf of Alaska. And there are several places for you to stop. And if you have binoculars that you can bring, you may want to bring them. Um, so there's several overlooks where you're just overlooking the ocean. And there is a little uh, outdoor museum there, uh, Potter Railroad Museum, which is really neat to stop and see. That's not a long stop, um, but it's, it's interesting to, to see it. Those points, though, where the overlooks are, they jut out into the Gulf just a little bit. And so sometimes, allegedly, you can see whales from there. I've not seen whales, but a lot of locals or like, I didn't take enough time, so I don't know. But um, I always stop and look, and I always stop by the Railroad Museum. So it takes me a lot longer to get to Seward. Um, and there's some, there's a couple of really neat places on the way that you may want to check out, too. I'll tell you about that later. So, yeah. Hawkenberry Holler says, Valerie is Wonder Woman this year. Valerie is Wonder Woman all the time. It was sorry, I had to take a phone call and missed a bit of the conversation. You do need to heal properly. Absolutely. Let me grab these sausage balls out. And the thermometer. My thermometer is missing. Hmm. There it is. Oh, yeah. So here they are. Let me temp check them. I temp check everything, people. And yet, they have temp checked fine. They're actually over where they need to be. <laughs> Can y'all hear this sizzle? I hope you could hear that. That's the sizzle. I'm going to grab one of these in a second. Y'all could hear that. I can, I can hear him over here. Um, I'm just gonna let this one cool a little bit and then taste it. So let's see. Um, Valerie says she needs to heal properly. Those of you who don't know, um, she has had surgery, but is doing pretty good. So check out her YouTube channel on that. They look good to Val. His mouth is watering. Gotcha. I'm going to give that just another minute. 
See if I can cool it off a little bit by waving it around. They're really good, y'all. Hot. Very hot. But good. And super easy. Super easy. It really just doesn't get any easier than that. It's three ingredients, which is nice. And they do, um, you do want to, I don't know if you can see, it gets a little crusty. That's the top or bottom side, the other top or bottom. So it can give you this nice crunch. It's really good. So let's see. He's, he is really, there are times when, I mean, he is a dog. So there's times when he doesn't want to listen, but when he does, he nails it. Um, I don't know if you saw or some of you all saw the video about me going and having the CT scan, but like I didn't realize that my blood sugar was dropping, but obviously it was because I wasn't talking well and Pipsy was not taking no for an answer. He was like, check it, check it now, check it now. But he does great. And I've got a an Instagram video that I'm going to turn into a YouTube short and it's several very brief clips of him part of it it's he's working part of it he's just hanging out and having fun and part of it is just photos of like him and me out places and stuff so he's really great and i give cares in kansas where i got the service dog really high praise he's been super and i have to tell you too god has a sense of humor about these things because what did I not want in a dog? I didn't want a puppy. I didn't want a small dog and I didn't want a Labrador retriever. So I wound up with a 13 month old Labrador retriever, which is a smaller dog than what I'd want. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, but obviously I love him. He's doing great. He's a super sweet dog. And hopefully all my team members to Alaska will be dog friendly. But yeah, but thank you for that. All right. Well, it is actually five after eight. So I'm going to go ahead and conclude the stream. I know we've got some folks that are going to be streaming later. And it is New Year's Eve. So you all go and just have a phenomenal, phenomenal new year that's coming up yeah it's going to be better we just have to believe it and pray for it and believe it okay so y'all hang in there and don't forget to always be bodacious which means you're not going to let life get in the way of living y'all take care and i'll see you on some videos this week and again on the live stream saturday at seven so good night y'all